Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, court orders arrest of former Minister of Petroleum Dezani Alison Madweke sentences two INEC officials to 21 years in prison over 362 million naira collected from her during the 2015 general elections. Senate begins probe of the Federal High Court invasion in Abuja by DSS operatives as the body of senior advocates of Nigeria weighed into the matter. House of Representatives passes bill to compel submission of ministerial portfolios alongside list of nominees to the National Assembly by the President. And voters across the United Kingdom turn out in their millions in a general election to decide their leader for the next four years. On business news tonight, International Finance Corporation's country manager recommends creation of special court to handle dispute between borrowers and lenders in credit markets. On sports news tonight, Arsenal Football Club seal a spot in the knockout phase of the UEFA Europa League. And from Abuja, Inspector General of Police suspends planned rally by the All Progressives Congress in Edo State as some APC supporters stage protest against proposed event. against corruption in Nigeria seems to have received the boost as a high court in Adamawa State today sentenced two INEC officials to 21 years in prison respectively for sharing 362 million naira collected from the former Minister of Petroleum Dezani Alison Madweke during the 2015 general elections in Adamawa State. The trial judge Justice Nathan Musa convicted the two officials after they were found guilty of the three counts. The judge ruled that the evidence from the 15 witnesses presented by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, including the suspects' testimonies, proved their involvement beyond any reasonable doubt. The EFCC had arraigned Ibrahim Mohammed and Sahabo Iya Haman before the court, alongside the third defendant, Mrs. Dezani Alice Madweke, who was said to be at large. Justice Musa notes that out of the 362 million naira they collected, only 5% of the amount was shared among the INF staff. They could not account for the balance as they claimed that hoodlums attacked one of them and carted away part of the money, a claim the court said they could not substantiate. We did our best and the court, in order to guide the court to arrive at a just and fair judgment and today we thank god we have arrived at that the courts have made a very sound and good pronouncement we're happy with that if you could recall the court clearly made an order that we to we are to lay out with other law enforcement agencies interpol and other agencies to see her bring uh, brought back to face her own trial and we surely hit to that to comply with the order of the court they were charged under the uh, corrupt practice and other related offenses act 2000 that's the conspiracy, corruptly uh, procuring monetary benefit, as well as also benefiting from the corrupt proceed of the crime. Meanwhile, the court has ordered the Inspector General of Police to liaise with the international police organization Interpol to arrest the former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Dezani Alison Madweke. Mrs. Alison Madweke is among the three defendants accused of deploying over 362 million naira derived from a $115 million slush fund to influence the outcome of the 2015 presidential elections in favor of the candidates of the then ruling People's Democratic Party. The former petroleum minister has been outside the country since 2015 and had alerted federal authorities that she's been undergoing treatment for cancer in the United Kingdom. Now let's stay with legal matters a bit. Now, this time on the invasion of the Federal High Court Abuja by the officials of the DSS in a bid to re-arrest the convener of Revolution Now, Omoyele Shoure, the body of senior advocates of Nigeria is demanding a probe into the invasion, and they say the troubling aspect of the incident was the audacity with which some of the actors entered the courtroom, thereby exposing a hallmark of indiscipline to the whole world. A representative of the senior lawyers, Mr. Thomas Okboko, made the comment at a valedictory session for Justice Kumai Akaa in Abuja. 
Our correspondent, Tamaka Okafo, reports. It's a gathering of members of the bar and the bench, retired jurists, friends, family and well-wishers at a valedictory session for Justice Kumai Akas of the Supreme Court. Of the various jurisdictions, even though the event is the sent forth of a jurist who has served the country for 33 years, it was an avenue for legal practitioners to bear their minds on the current events in the nation's judiciary. The body of senior advocate hereby demands that our president considers without delay the setting up of a judicial commission of inquiry to hear publicly and determine the perpetrators of the, of the acts, their sponsors and their objectives. Also of concern to the body of senior lawyers and the Nigerian Bar Association is the constant flouting of court orders by some organizations. We urge the courts to demonstrate that they are not toothless in sanctioning persons who flagrantly disobey and flout court orders. They need to be denied audience before any and all courts during the pendency of their contemptuous conducts. They need to know that disobedience of court orders can be and is costly. At a separate meeting of the justices of the appeal court, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, in answering questions on the intimidation of the judiciary, has this to say. Uh, Mr. Mbaba is, um, Honorable Justice Mbaba is saying that uh, we have a lot to blame, we ourselves, because the executive, yes, has to execute. And uh, the position of judiciary in Nigeria, we are still facing a lot of intimidations here and there. So he says we have a lot to, be, to, to blame, we ourselves. Meaning, in other words, that we are, we have, we are a contributing factor to whatever happens to us. Now, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know uh, where to start. Now, you see, our profession does not encourage us to go a begging. And we cannot do that. But otherwise, a committee should have been set up let it go and discuss with the officials of government, that is the executive. The judiciary has been in the eye of the storm in recent times, and it may just be time for stakeholders to stand up and be firm to preserve the rule of law. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the Senate has asked its Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to investigate the reported invasion. Now, this follows a point of order moved by the chairman of the committee, Senator Okwaya Mibamidili, who noted that Nigerians had raised a lot of concern in different quarters on the issue. He explains that the leadership and members of the judiciary were particularly concerned about the development. The reported alleged invasion of the courtroom, again by alleged officials of the Department of State for Security, is one issue that has raised a lot of concern in different quarters in Nigeria. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the leadership and members of the judiciary are particularly concerned about this development because they believe, like the rest of us do, that the courtroom is meant to be a sanctuary. But for us as a Senate, we cannot begin to take a position or analyze issues based on conclusion without facts that we, con that we consider incontrovertible. Yet, much as we cannot just jump into conclusions, it's also a fact that we cannot pretend 
not to know that Nigerians are concerned about this development. In the meantime, the Sultan of Sokoto and President General of the Nigeria Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, Al Haji Saad Abubakar, has also lent his voice to the raging controversy over the reported cases of disobedience to court orders. At an event in the nation's capital, Abuja, today, the Sultan warns that the disobedience to any court order is a recipe for lawlessness and chaos. The monarch noted that everyone must be law abiding in the interest of national development and must regularly obey and respect the laws of the land. The Sultan also calls for interreligious dialogue in the country, noting that it would foster a better understanding among the people. He made the comments at the 2019 fourth quarter meeting of the Nigeria Interreligious Council. A bill for an act to alter the constitution to provide for a timetable for submitting the names of ministerial or commissioner nominees with portfolios attached has scaled second reading in the House of Representatives. The bill also seeks to make it compulsory for the president or governor to attach evidence of declaration of assets and liabilities of the nominees. Our correspondent Terry Ikumi reports. It's the final plenary of the week in the House of Representatives. A number of bills are scheduled for second reading. One of them is for an act to amend the constitution and provide for a timetable for submitting the names of ministerial or commissioner's nominees with portfolios attached and evidence of declaration of assets and liabilities of the nominees. In this amendment, I am proposing 21 days for elected presidents and elected governors to submit their list of ministerial nominees and commissioners to, to the legislative arm. And again, very necessary for whoever, Mr. President or the governor, to bring in the names with the attached portfolio so that Nigerians can even sit in their house and see that this person, yes, is questioned. Another bill which requires alteration of the Constitution seeks to make free, compulsory and basic education a fundamental right of all citizens. As it is now, education is under the directive principles of state policy, which is not justiciable. It's not actionable in court. You cannot hold government into account or take any tier of government to court saying that you have not gotten access to at least basic pre and compulsory education. A third bill seeks to amend the Legislative House's Powers and Privileges Act 2017 to provide punishment on the police or any other law enforcement agent who refuses to arrest any person as directed by a Legislative House, especially persons who fail to honor a summon of a Legislative House. Even though Section 129 of the Constitution empowers the National Assembly and State Assemblies to compel, a, to, to compel attendance or appearance before committees through arrests and fines. The punishment so prescribed have been so mild. The Legislative Houses Act 2017 permits a Legislative House to issue a warrant of arrest on any person. But does it conflict with Chapter 5 of the 1999 Constitution, which does not expressly say the word arrest, but only empowers a legislative house to issue a warrant to compel the attendance of any person who, after being summoned to attend, fails, refuses, or neglects to do so? Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, President Buhari and his Egyptian counterpart, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, pledged to collaborate to eliminate terrorism in parts of Africa. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.